Okay, so now we're going to, um, now that we've finished the skateboard, we're going to do the top piece, which has got, um, it's made of a piece of coving. Johnny's own doesn't quite look right, so what we're going to do is put a piece on top to match up with that, and that, just this little, there's a lip just here, and we'll make that about 10 millimetres. And that just, it really sets this off nicely. So, uh, I've, again, I'll do the same as I did with the other end. I'll cut the 45 degrees into it, leaving a little bit on the end that will trim to length uh, when I'm happy that it's exactly the right length and the right angle and stuff. till last because this is more important to try and get right to avoid having as many gaps as possible. This little gap will be okay because we'll be able to put some filler in it when we finish the part, when we finish it. Firstly, a quick apology. Last night my camera battery died as I was getting the uh, coving finished, so I haven't got all of that. Uh, anyway, so what I did after that was just go in and fill in all the nail holes um, with some wood filler. Um, it is a bit orange, but that's okay because we're going to stain this the pine slightly darker anyway, so you, that won't be too obvious once it's done. Uh, what I did to make my life easy with this is just use a little bit of masking tape and just cut out a small hole. And you put the masking tape on, a bit of filler on your finger, rub over it. It sits slightly proud because this, the filler can shrink as it dries. And then all I'm gonna do in a minute is go back and sand it all off. Uh, the other thing I've realized I need to do is I need to take a notch out the back for the skirting board. So I'm just gonna do that now.
Okay, so now that we've got the uh, piece mostly finished, we've filled all the holes, sanded them back, uh, we're going to start applying finish. This uh, this one's going to have two uh, two tone finish, a bit like the other one. We've got a kind of a, a Danish oil, but one that's going to add a darker stain that we'll put on all the uh, kind of pine, um, and then there's a chalk finish paint that's going to be on the majority of the carcass. Even though most of this is going to have paint on it on the front, uh, I'm going to apply one at least once coat of stain because if uh, if we decide to add a, a distressed finish to it, then at least the wood that shows through will be the same colour as the wood around the top and the bottom and on the back. So now that we've got most of the stain on, we're on to the final couple of steps. So we're now going to paint all of this, uh, the face frame and the carcass in the paint that's been selected, which is a chalk paint in grey to go in with the room it's going in. Um, before I can apply the paint, I am just going to um, apply masking to the top and bottom edge because I don't want any paint on this piece and I don't want any paint down on the skirting board. some thin uh, tongue and groove material. Uh, I've got some off cuts from a previous job so I've been able to check how many I need so I need eight lengths. Uh, so yeah I'm just going to check the length and then cut them to length. measure the heights of the shelves and pre-drill a hole through all the boards while they're stacked on top of each other because it makes um, nailing the boards onto the backboards onto the shelves much easier. So, we've got the finish applied to the backboards, um, 
to the last steps now. All we've got to do, all we've got to do is just cut the uh, cut the backboards to width. Um, so I'm going to cut the grooves off one side, nail them all on, measure the last one, and cut the tongue off that one, and then that'll be it. One of the things that's important to do when you're uh, putting a number of boards next to one another is that you've got to allow for expansion and contraction due to moisture change within the wood which you get from the general atmosphere. So when I'm putting each of these boards in I need to make sure I'm leaving, it doesn't have to be a lot, but one or two mil gap between each board will allow them to expand and contract without starting to pull the other boards off or bow because they're all stuck in place. finishing wax so I'll brush it on first and then buff it back for a few minutes. 